So we're on the last page. This is the climax where the uh, theme the is about the third time we've heard the theme uh, with the same left hand, and this time in octaves forte. It's been in octaves before, but not forte. So now no. it's the, this is the climax, this section. 41, you know, where you have those, that, that's a climactic measure there. It got a little bit like I wasn't sure where the, the pulse was, you know, from where it was before. Um, what are you going to bring out in measure 41? What are you going to bring out in that measure on, on, on top? Um, be this, right? Yeah, he, he, has some ac he has accent on the CB in the bass. He does. Mm -hmm. But also what's interesting is the moving chromatic, uh, kind of when he does this. Right? That's something of interest. Like here. You're gonna need that. You also want to hear. Hear that? In other words, I want to hear that too. That's a beautiful little chromatic line there. There's a B. There's a B. There's a B. And then there's parallel thirds. Now they all go horizontal. But if you didn't have that chromatic, you would just have ba 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 b. Interesting, but what makes it interesting is this voice here. So I make the listener aware of the chromatic inside that, that little alto voice there for a moment. Aware that it's there, that it's not just thrown out the window. You know that it's really part of the passion of that that little passage down. Because he wouldn't have that chromatic if he didn't want us to pay attention to it. Look what he does in the left hand. You, you're doing this right. marks on it. Put accent marks on CB. Getting you ready. Da, 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 da. It like feeds across. Try to frequently pedal that because you're going to get a mess if you do. Right? You're going to pedal, 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 off and pedal. You know, you come off, you come on the pedal, but you don't want this to be blurred. That's what you're going to get, right? Yeah, you're going to have to frequently pedal. Don't pay attention to that pedal because it makes no sense. You have to pedal a little bit more up down when you have chromatic movement of three notes. You don't want it to blur. It starts here, right? Starts there. That's an important one. That's an important place. Because we never did that before. He just never did that before in the piece. It's something different. But you still go horizontal. I mean, you, you bring it out, but you're still going traveling to the lateral. Right? You're never going up, down. Um, but here, are you doing this? He wants that. Suddenly, he's bringing that out, those two notes. Where do you finally mm. fall anyway is the cadence. Finally, now you're down to this next section. But be careful it doesn't get too soon. Yeah, because look, he's using, he's, look, he's got octaves on the outside, right, octaves. Right, he wouldn't have those big octaves supporting the melody if it wasn't full, you know, and he has a little note in the middle, too. So you can't thin it out too much. Here it's thin, right here, this is thin, right, the scoring. But now you've got so much more voicing, you know, in this 39 and 40 and 41 with octaves and forte and then chords and, you know. So, yes, that's right. That, that page really improved very nicely. But you know what you have to work on with the balance of some of the voices at the end, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because what happened there was suddenly, I think it got tight, so we heard the lower voices suddenly. Instead of the A on top. 44, there's a two um, E, the three E. So right here, the first one will be. You gotta float those, y'all. You can't have them all the same. Actually, the most important E is that downbeat E, and the other E's are floating out of it across. Less. They're floating across. You don't want to hear them all the same, do you? No, so the. Basically, the first one should be... The destination uh, is the first one. Be the, uh, right. And it's very, it's got a lot of swell in it. See that swell? Right? Now this one comes out of it. Right. If 
you could sing it, you could play it. Yeah, so the shape of the, all the E's are very important in measure 44, that they don't get vertical, that they're going horizontal. And they have a destination, which is the G. G. So you gotta be so relaxed in your breathing. Your breathing techniques gotta be there. How much breath you're using, when you take your new breath, um, so forth, where you have your cadence, what's going on, shaping the line, everything. Um, so you're falling down with the parallel thirds. So, and three dash two. So the G is tied, and you're listening for the top E, wrist forward. Yeah, wrist forward for this. Wrist forward. Dominant. That's your dominant of the E minor. Do measure three, the measure before. So you want to get the three against four or the four, whatever you call it, two against three, four against three, actually. Um, you, you want to get it so I don't know that it's four, two against three, but it just floats through the, the notes. You just first remind yourself, because the conductor hand is left hand, left hand is right there. Make sure these two are spacing. Space the notes out. Space the notes. It's the arm wrist goes a little bit, rolls forward with a light arm. That's right. Not a snap of the wrist, but just a roll of the wrist. Yeah, remember it's continuous motion. Listen for the notes before decaying. This is decaying now a little bit of leaning fold down here. Yeah. You're going to have to have a very soft wrist to do that sponge. you got to come in with a spongy sound there, like this. Say, look, hear it? You can't play with fingers, or with tight wrist fingers down. It won't work. Piano playing is complete ear training. Any instrument is ear training. You have to train your ears. You have yeah. to be, your ears have to tell you what you want to hear. You can't decide that it's just going to happen. You have to know, what, am I, what do I want? And then you have to know how to get what you want. That's the uh -huh. other part. Well, if you play with a floating arm and supple wrist, you shouldn't have any, you should have all kinds of shock absorbers that you don't get uh, abrupt smacks or accents. Because this music really, the only real accent, you know, you could say, it's kind of here. Is that right? I say where he does this when I show. I'm not smacking. I'm not poking my fingers at. But I'm leaning where we we did before. That CB where he wants the brat. It means lean, lean. Doesn't mean smack, smack. Mm. This piece is what you're learning how to keep your mood. Whether you play a climax or not, you still have this fundamental singing tone and floating sound. Be a little deeper in the keys for here. Watch. whatever you heard from this. See? That's decaying. And then what? Pick it up at the end. And he's going from here. Listen. That's uh, the romantic period. They go down a third from a major chord, down a third to another major chord. It's beautiful. They do this all the time. Hear it? Yeah. Hear that? It's too beautiful. So the listener hears that B major, and you want to melt it into the G major. He keeps the B in the left hand. He keeps the B. It's upstairs now. But think of a decay, and then into the melt. Melt of the sixth, sixth beat. The sixth measure has the melted first beat. Melt it down. Because now the second time he's bringing the theme in, he's bringing more intensity. It doesn't mean super intensity. It just means, oh, I have a bigger voice now for the theme. It's an octaves. And it says oh. MF. Two things, not just that it's, that it's an octave, but it's MF. So if you get too light, you're going to get into trouble. Because then what are you going to do when you want to dip down to this? This here. Remember, that's going to fall down. Now, if, that doesn't, if that's too, way too soft before that, there's nowhere to come down. 
mm. the whole section. This is a new section. You could say the theme coming back in octaves MF. I mean, mm -hmm. go play deeper in the keys. Doesn't mean it's not a climax, but play deeper in the keys. the end here that you know the very end uh, you do want to bring out on um, measure 55 you want to bring out the A this A I heard a lot of lower notes there so I want to hear this I want to hear this right A A balance toward the A now you have to do that with you know first of all you have to internalize that what you want to hear and then you physically have to think you're actually playing toward the five and lightening up on the three two. This. Hear the A? A, A, G sharp. So you want to go A. It's a hard place because it could jump out on you. The wrist forward gives you this, but very soft. Kind of hard because what has to come out? The G sharp. The G sharp, A, A, G sharp are the melody notes. And even though the pedal will help, you do a little bit of drag. See how I drag the two to the one, drag it over. I don't try to squeeze it like this, do I? That's ridiculous, you don't do that. But if you do the opposite and you do this, you will hear a break. So you gotta have the illusion of the legato by dragging over. You don't have to twist, you're dragging. That's why I'm dragging, drag. I don't see myself twisting. Am I twisting? Not at all. I just, it's no twist at all. It's just a drag horizontal. I'm not talking about the other one. The other one you, you did quite well because you're still dragging that way, right? What's happening here? No twisting here. You're just dragging. I always drag. See how I drag? Drag. Drag. Yeah, drag over. See? Nobody knows. You know, there was no gap, really. And beside, this is going to be on top of it. So the listener is directed toward what? Upstairs. So it kind of covers it up, but you still don't want to have a literal gap that's too much. Okay, because that's a tricky place where you go five, one, two, slide. Look, this is my pantomime. See that? Look at the pantomime. That's it. And in 53, what are you bringing out? You're bringing the D sharp. Underneath, and you know that you're bringing out the D sharp and resolve to the E, right? Yeah, I would keep it level. It's level. Now forward. Yeah, why should you do all kinds of extra motions? You know, you could be hanging your arm, yes, but you don't need to do this for each one, do you? The second one, lighter. Lighter, for sure. Yeah. Now, remember, if you get too light on beat number four, how can you get lighter on the next measures beat, on the resolution note? <laughs> You've got to be careful. Time. This is hard on this piano because it's kind of a heavy action. We can't float it too much. Here, hear that one? Up here. 